everybody, it's Mariana with Three Peaks Classroom. In today's video, I want to go over my math games bin that I use to teach about addition and subtraction. Now, I did a previous video talking about all the games that I use to teach about place value. So if you're interested in that unit, I will link it down below and you can watch the video all about place value. This video today is going to be about the games that I use during my math stations or in case I need a quick game in math, all to, all to do with addition or subtraction. Now I typically spend anywhere between four to five weeks, maybe even six weeks, depending on the class, talking about addition and subtraction as a unit because I find that um, really understanding the place values and regrouping and borrowing, that will really help them when we get into multiplication and division. So I do typically spend a little bit more time on this unit, but now with the new math curriculum, you know, and all the new outcomes that we have, um, I've shortened it now to four weeks uh, to teach about addition and subtraction. All right, let's get started. So the first thing I have here right off the bat are I have two sets of flashcards that I use. Now, I typically don't use flashcards too, too much. I will use them in a small group setting. So if I have a few minutes left uh, at the end of a rotation and I've finished everything that I needed to do with my group, then I will take out flashcards and I will, you know, ask the kids to do it in front of me. Or if we're lining up to go someplace like the end of the day or if we're going to phys ed or music or whatever, I will just show each kid a flashcard and if they get the answer correct, then boom, off they go. If they get it incorrect, they go to the back of the line and then we just quickly practice like that because I do believe that having these, you know, somewhat memorized and quickly done with mental math, I think it's super important. So flashcards are a yes in my classroom. The next game that I have is super duper fun. It's called Boo Bump. So I have a whole stack of these. And if you've seen my place value video, you know that every game I have already arranged and I have everything they need in order to play the game with the exception of dice or cards. I keep that on my shelf because those are easily accessed by my students all the time. But if they want to play this boo bump game, for example, they just take this bag, all the markers that they need are right in here. And I've already gone ahead and I've already laminated it, which includes the instructions. Now, if this, game is, um, if this game is available on TPT or if it's a free download, I will put the link in the description below. But I did make these games, I've laminated them. I made them a long time ago, like hmm, seven or eight years ago. So if I can't find the exact source for them, my apologies, but I will do my best to make sure that you guys can have a copy of, to find a copy of these games. So Boo Bump is such a really fun game to play. Um, you can play in groups of two or three. You roll three number cubes or three dice, and then you have to add up those numbers, and then you cover up a number on the board. If you've covered it up twice, that means it's locked in, and you have five um, markers that you have to get on the board. If you've covered it once, and someone else needs that number, then they can bump yours off, and they can put theirs on instead. So Boo Bump is a great game to play, especially around Halloween. The next game I have, the next sets of game that I have, are called just the dinosaur sub subtraction game. So I've gone ahead and I've printed them off and I cut them out, put them on green cardstock paper, and then I laminate them for durability. And then inside each bag is a smaller Ziploc bag. And I've labeled here that there are seven markers and three players can play here. And so these markers looks like have gotten a little bit mixed up. I use these wooden cubes from the dollar store. I use these guys as marker pieces. And then if we accidentally lose one, oops, <laughs> then I use um, a felt marker caplet. We also have a die in here and there are seven chips to play the game. So how you play the dinosaur subtraction game, it says this game is for two to four players and you need counters and dice, that's it. Each player puts their counter on the start and then players take turns rolling the dice, they move forward that many spaces, and then they have to answer the subtraction equation. So 10 minus two is eight, they would have to cover up one of the eights. If a number is already covered, then the player does not cover any number on its turn. If a player lands on a dinosaur, they can cover any number of their choice. The winner is the player who covers the last circle. So it doesn't matter how many you have on there, you are working together to cover, but the winner is the person that covers up the last number um, 
on the board game. So really fun, two to four players, um, an excellent fun little game for a subtraction. Similar to my Boo Bump, I have here a doubles bump game. So if I take out my board game, I have also pre-laminated these. I went ahead and I cut out the title. I don't know if you can kind of see it. Doubles bump. And I cut out the circles and I glued them all around the board game. But then on the back, I've also included the instructions. So I just put a white sticker on and I wrote the instructions out. Spin the spinner and double the number. Cover the answer with a marker. If the answer is covered by your opponent, you can bump them off. Lock in your number by placing two markers on top of a number and you win when all of your markers are on. So it's just like Boo Bump, but this time, instead of rolling three dice, my students have a spinner. So I've already went ahead and I made the spinners. And typically there is a, um, a paper clip in there, but not today. Um, and then these are the markers. I just use paper, just sheets of uh, index cards that are in different colors. And I have five for each color. And that's all they need to play Devil's Bow. Now this game has addition and subtraction in it. This game is called five in a row, subtract two. So the way that you play this game is you have to roll two dice and you have to add them up, but then you subtract two from the sum and then you cover up the number on here. The first person to get five markers in a row, kind of like a bingo game, wins. You might roll a number and then you realize that a lot of your numbers are on this side of the board game. You're going to want to make sure that you, um, you know, choose to put your numbers on this side. And the free space is for anyone to use. So nobody covers it up. That's a free space. Anybody can use it. Five in a row, subtract two. All of my materials are in here. Then the last game I have in my addition and subtraction bin is just a page that I have made myself. Super simple. It's called Make 10. You could probably find a downloadable copy somewhere in the internet world. But all I did was I made um, five rectangles, one at the very top, darkened, the rest are all light gray, light gray. And the kids have to take a deck of cards and they have to weed out any of the face cards. So you are left with um, one, actually face cards and 10, you take out the 10s. So you're left with ace all the way to nine. You put the deck here face down. And then the students flip over four cards, one, two, three, four, and they see if they can make a 10 using any combination of the cards on the bottom. And if they can, they take those cards, they put them off to the side, and that's one grouping or one pile. And then they flip over some more. If they can't make a combination of 10 using these cards, they wipe the board clean, put them under the deck and start over. And they keep going to see how many piles they can get. Uh, this game I like to play individually. So when we have math by myself, maybe instead of doing a worksheet, the kids can take this game to their desks and they can just sit quietly for 10 minutes while they play this make 10 game. They can also sit and chat next to a partner, but everybody has their own game. So there you go. I have a make 10 game, five in a row, subtract two. I have doubles bump with the spinner. I have the dinosaur subtraction game and I have my Boo Bump Halloween edition game. Plus, like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I do have my flashcards that I like to use for quick mental math um, in their head for addition and subtraction. Those are all the games that I use to teach addition and subtraction during my math stations or if I need a quick game or sometimes on a Friday afternoon if, if I feel like we're just grooving along with our math lessons, instead of teaching that day, I might just have the kids pick a game that they would like to play with, with friends. And we just have a chill Friday like that sometimes, still reinforcing math concepts through games, which I love. So thank you so much for watching everybody. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I will be going over some more of my math games that I use to teach fractions, to teach multiplication and division, to teach geometry. So if that's interesting to you, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any of those videos. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next video.